While working on my latest game, Forever Afterlife, I ran into a serious creative block. I just couldn't continue development because I couldn't figure out how to get unstuck. I was ready to give up and move on to another game, but then I stumbled upon some solid advice that really helped me out. I'm going to share with you what I've learned and how I solved my creative block. In my opinion, Rampai games are story first and gameplay second. Most Rampai players want an engaging story, and it's probable that you also enjoy games with a good story, and it's very likely that you enjoy writing good stories. And not realizing this myself was what got me stuck, because when I started working through the Rampai launcher and in the code editor, I realized that the code editor encourages programming and mechanics building. And that really got me stuck because there were too many options. There were so many things I could explore gameplay wise that I got totally lost in the story and didn't know how to finish my game. So my advice is don't start your Rampai project inside Rampai. I used a writing app called Scrivener because it's made for writers. You can have index cards, you can have character sheets, you can collect all your research in Scrivener. It's a really solid program and you can really feel that it's made for writers. But of course any writing app will do. Just keep it simple. You can use Word or Google Docs or Apple Notes. All writing apps work and they won't distract you from writing your story by encouraging programming. And of course more tactile options work like post-it notes and physical notebooks. They also work great for this. And now you might wonder what kind of advice was it that I stumbled upon? It can't be enough just to switch app and you write. While wasting time on YouTube instead of developing my game, I stumbled upon Glenn Gear's six questions to have a story. Glenn Gear is a professional and experienced screenwriter and his message is clear. First, you need a story. And one simple way to have a story is to ask yourself these six questions. Who is the story about? This might be an obvious question, but I realized I hadn't really asked myself this question when developing my game. So I had too many ideas because I hadn't a clear vision. Who were the characters in the game and how many characters should I have? So the first question is, who is the story about? The second question is, what do they want? And this includes all characters in the game. The player, the antagonist, and all side characters. What do they want? Because this will really inform you what this game is about. And by knowing what each character in the game tries to achieve, then you'll have a much easier time writing your story. The third question is, why can't they have it? And here we have conflict, and conflict is central in all good stories. There must be a reason why the player can't get what the player wants, and there must be a reason why the antagonist can't get what they want, and there must be a reason why the side characters can't get what they want. If you figure this out, you're on your way to have a story. The fourth question is, what will they do about it? How will they try to solve the conflict? What will the player try to do to reach their goal? And what will the antagonist do to try to reach their goal? As you can see, these questions force you to dig deeper into your story and to really find out what you are trying to write. The fifth question is, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't the player's attempts to reach their goal work? And why doesn't the antagonist's attempts work? And why doesn't the side character's attempts work? There must be some kind of conflict and some kind of twist in the story because it will make it more interesting if the perfect plan that the player has figured out somehow fails. Then finally you have to figure out how does it end. So is there an unexpected side effect of the player's attempt to solve the problem or is there an unexpected side effect of the antagonist's attempt to solve the problem or maybe the side character's attempt. So find something how the story ends and these six questions really got me unstuck. Who is it about? What do they want? Why can't they have it? What will they do about it? And why does it work? And how does it end? But I also stumbled upon another video that really helped me out. And that was Cassie Phillips' GDC keynote. And she had some really inspiring advice. And she said that if you don't have a story, don't try to write branches in your Rempai game. And that was exactly what I had done and it created massive confusion for me. Before you even start to think about branching out, write a solid story. And that is also why I encourage you not to use Rempai while writing your story. Because like I said before, the code editor encourages branching and gameplay mechanics. The second thing she said is, if you don't have a script, don't try to write choices. Write your script first. And my take on it was to actually start writing the good ending first. I just wrote the Rempai game as an ordinary story that ended in a good way. And Cassie's advice is that you look for question marks in your script. And there you can create your questions that can then lead to branches. 
And all choices that you create, they must have understandable pros and cons. And this must be clear to the player. You can't have plain or boring choices that are unclear to the player what the consequences will be. There has to be something at stake or else the choices will be pointless and just filler. This doesn't mean that just choices have to lead to other branches, just that they have consequences for the game, like changing characters' attitudes against the player depending on what they choose. And it should be clearly visible to the player how the NPCs react to the player's choices because then they know there will be consequences. And finally, Cassie said, make sure that the player has agency. Try to involve a choice in your game as soon as possible so that the player feels engaged in the story and know that they can have an impact on the story's outcome. So make sure that the player has agency. Thank you for watching this video, you're awesome and I hope you can learn from my mistakes and not start your Rempai game in Rempai. If you want to check out some of my Rempai games you can click on the link in the description of this video. If you try my games I would really appreciate if you leave a comment on itch.io. I really encourage you to check out Glenn and Cass's videos and you will find links to them in the description of this video. Anyway, take care and I hope to see you soon in another video. Bye.